So previously we talked about our wonderful carrier gases and how beautiful of a job that they did to pump stuff through the machine and out the other end. And we talked about three versions of carrier gas, hydrogen, helium, and nitrogen. And we said that helium was the most common. All right, so we left off talking about the filtration system. And we said that these gases have to be five niners, which means these gases have to be super, super pure in order for us to use them. And that's why for us, they're so expensive. All right, so here is a flow path of a traditional filter system when it concerns gases. So here is the gas tank. This is what I have ordered from the company and they've delivered it to my laboratory. And this gas tank is filled with a carrier gas. Traditionally, it's helium. And helium comes up out of the tank and into what we call a regulator. Now, the regulator you want to imagine as your gas tank on your vehicle. One valve will tell you how much helium is left in the tank. That way you know when you're getting low. And when you get low, you better fill the tank up or the GC is going to shut down. And you don't want the tank to completely go dry. Because if you do, there's typically a lot of trash at the bottom and the trash will come up out of the tank and then over into your system. And you don't want to take that chance. The other regulator side regulates the pressure that the gas is leaving out of the tank with. So it controls the flow. So a very steady foot on a gas pedal. If you crank the gas pedal down faster or harder, you'll go faster. If you lift off the, the gas pedal with your foot, your car goes down and it slows down. The same kind of thing happens to the regulator. The regulator is your gas pedal. You can speed it up or you can slow it down. And each instrument has its own setting as far as regulation goes or the regulator goes. So gas leaves the tank, it goes through the regulator, and then the very first thing that it does is if you've got some kind of filtration apparatus is it goes through a moisture barrier. All right, now the moisture is going to take water out of the gas. So these gas tanks can have water vapor. And you don't want water vapor to enter into the GC system. The reason is that water destroys the column. So it doesn't really matter what type of GC that you have. All of these are no-nos when it concerns any type of water. You should never be injecting water vapor into the GC. You should never be injecting any type of substance that has been dissolved in water in the GC. These do complete destruction on the interiors of the columns, and that's bad news. So never, ever, ever, ever inject water or anything near water onto the GC system. All right, this should be purely hydrocarbons. It should be purely organic in nature, including the solvents that you have your sample dissolved in. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, the next filter will be the hydrocarbon filter. And the hydrocarbons will take away all of the organic material other than the helium that might be present and going through into the machine. So, you know, these are typically gases and they're dirty gases. Even 5 nanor gases is dirty gas. And we want to remove all of that that we can. And water is one of those. Hydrocarbon is the next. Now, what does hydrocarbons do? Uh, well, hydrocarbon contamination is not a big deal when it concerns the column. Hydrocarbon contamination 
causes a problem on the detector side. And the reason is because your sample is probably hydrocarbon. And if your sample's hydrocarbon, your detector's going to see this and it's going to print off a chromatogram for you. And if there's hydrocarbons that are involved in the gas, not in your sample, but in the gas itself, and that gas is dirty, then you're going to get maybe some extra peaks that show up in this chromatogram that wasn't there in the beginning. And you don't want that to happen. So this is really due to chromatogram problems and detector problems as far as the hydrocarbons go. Uh, finally, it goes through a molecular sieve or sieve, tomato, tomato, and this basically filters out anything that's large. Any large particles will be trapped and only the small ones will be able to go through. Uh, finally, we have a O2 uh, removal system. It can also do destruction on the column. And then out the other end, it goes to finally my GC system itself. All right. So there's different filters in a way that the gas has to go through in order to make it to the GC if you use an inline filter. And those are the filtration systems. Now, the diagram is set up this way to make you believe that these are all separate. The problem, though, is that these are not separate, right? All of these have now been combined. They used to be. You used to have different filters that you would have to hook up, but now they've all been combined into what we call a big trap, right? And the big trap takes all of those individual filters and it crams them down into this one individual filter and that one individual filter will begin to filter your samples through, okay? So that's the filter that you would traditionally see on a gas tank or that filter will be attached to the back end of a GC. And that's the purpose of that big stainless steel tube. It's to remove the water and to remove the hydrocarbons and to remove the oxygen and to remove any large particles that might make it into the GC. And those big traps have to be replaced depending on how much you use it, of course, as with anything, depending on how dirty your gas is in the beginning. Those could have to be replaced every couple of months. Uh, for us, ours traditionally last a couple of years because we just don't use it all the time and our samples are typically cleaner and our gases are typically cleaner. Right? Okay, so uh, some more about the GC system. Uh, the GC system, as far as the carrier gas goes, we now know is helium. This gives us a very quick um, separation rate. This actually separates things a little bit better than some of the other gases that are out there, but not for hydrogen. Right? Hydrogen is still the best separator. However, hydrogen is explosive. Okay, so in the next video, uh, what we'll do is that we'll talk about uh, maybe some more details of carrier gas and stationary phase. Uh, before we do that though, uh, there is an instrument that will allow you to detect the flows that come from the tanks and these are called flow meters and the flow meter is basically a little handheld device that you can wand around certain areas to see how fast the gas is coming through the machine or out of your tank. Uh, here's a picture of a GC unit this GC unit has some gas tanks over here to the side. You can see now the regulators up here at the very top. And those regulators, we now know why there's two dials up here. One tells us how full the tank is. One tells us how fast it's coming out of the tank because we've got control over those types of things. And then here's a gas container for a company. So that looks nothing like a laboratory and this company particularly, probably uses that particular gas all the time. And these little nilly tanks, willy nilly tanks, not going to do anything for them. So they would be going through these maybe a couple a day, who knows. But these tanks allow for one massive, maybe helium tank to be pumped into a laboratory. 
And then when that main line is pumped into the laboratory, those lines are then diverted out into the individual labs that need them. And they go directly and hook up to the GC instrument itself. Okay, so that's the story with the GC system and the carrier gas. So keep in mind, water vapor destroys the column. Never be injecting water into the GC. And hydrocarbons play a factor as far as the detector goes. You don't want to see these ghosty little strange peaks that should not be there uh, just because it's coming from trashy, nasty little gas. All right, so the next video, we'll move on to our next piece and we'll just keep tugging along.